When you think of Islamic scholarship, which country do you think of? Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Yemen, or even Syria? But how many of you think about this country? Mauritania. Mauritania has got to be the most interesting country. It sits right here on the borders of the Atlantic Ocean and Northwestern Africa. 90% of it is made up of the Sahara Desert and its population is a reflection of a fusion between Arabian and Berber ethnicity, language and culture. Also, like most of Africa, it was colonized by Europeans, specifically the French. But despite being ripped of its resources by the French, that's not what this video is about. You see, Mauritania has been one, if not the most vital countries in contributing to Islamic scholarship in the world. For centuries, Mauritanians and other Western African Muslims were admired throughout the Muslim world for their enthusiasm for Islamic scholarship. As of the late 20th century, it is estimated that there were close to 30,000, yes, 30,000 manuscripts preserved in nearly 300 libraries in Mauritania. But how? How did Mauritanians living in the middle of the Saharan desert have access to literature from all across the Muslim world? And more so, how did Mauritanian scholarship become so sought after from the Islamic world? Well, let's find out. The story of Islam in Mauritania starts here by this ancient city, Chinkit. For more than 1200 years, Chinkit has welcomed travelers seeking shelter from the harsh Saharan heats. Founded in the 8th century, it was originally a caravan stop for Hajj pilgrims that blossomed into one of the biggest centers of science, religion, and mathematics in West Africa. It is because of this city and its reputation that gave the Northwestern African region its name, Bilad al Chinkit, which is why any scholar bearing the title al Chinkiti suggests strong scholarly expertise. As pilgrims and scholars came and went, many left behind religious texts, scientific studies, and historical manuscripts. In fact, so many of these historical documents accumulated over the years that during Shinkit's peak, during the 13th and 17th centuries, this thriving city boasted 30 libraries. Saharan families from across generations preserved these books and manuscripts in Saharan libraries. This reflected the immense sources of knowledge and by extension, power and prestige to the families who own these libraries. Saharan traditions of Islamic knowledge in and around Saharan oasis thrived thanks to these enterprising activities of Saharan scholars and their families. Scholars were often traders, which means they were also really successful in acquiring and producing literature. So it's fair to say that a culture of Quran memorization, mastery of the Arabic language, poetry, and the practice of Islamic jurisprudence was fostered across Balad al shanqid The Mauritanians understood that when the Prophet وسلم, commanded all Muslims to seek knowledge, it didn't mean that they couldn't just plant their feet and give way and wait for the knowledge to come to them. They had to interact with the wider Islamic world. Wherever they went, they would lead the world in Islamic sciences and become the leading scholar on the Arabic language, like Sheikh Muhammad Mahmoud al turkizi al shanqid who held the position of Chair of Arabic at Al-Azhar University. As a matter of fact, the political scientists Alec Thurston and Michael Fulkar have suggested that there are more professors from Mauritania in Saudi Islamic universities than any other country. Even female Mauritanians contributed greatly to all areas of classical Islamic scholarship, like Khadija bint Muhammad al shanqiti who was nicknamed al qariya al shanqitiya meaning the highly persuasive woman from Chinkit, because of her active ability to engage and win scholarly arguments against male scholars. She would often use the Quran and Hadith to help promote women's role in Islamic scholarship and learning. Mauritanians and other Northwestern Saharan Islamic scholars have also had a profound impact on Islamic culture. They built robust Islamic networks that were and still are central to Islamic trends and ideas that go beyond borders. Their mastery of classical Islamic knowledge, the Arabic language, poetry, and memorization of the Quran cemented their authority on transnational religious authority. Till now, Mauritanian Islamic culture continues to exhibit rich intellectual tradition and global relevance. May Allah bless the scholars of Mauritania who have carried the knowledge of this beautiful religion. 
Amen. If you enjoyed this video along with all the other content that One Path Network produces, please support us so we can create more beneficial content for the world. Go to onepathnetwork.com and you can support us from as little as $1 a day. Jazakumullah khair for your support. <laughs>